Hello, everybody. I'm going to start welcoming everybody back to our next final sessions for the afternoon of uh, Earth Observations, Group for Earth Observations. And I'm very pleased to welcome next on stage, Nana. And I see that she's already got her slides ready for us. Welcome, Nana. Give everybody a moment to settle back into your chairs behind your computers. Um, Nana is a geo AI lead and machine learning engineer at Development Seed, and she has a PhD in ecological economics and has applied geospatial analysis and satellite imagery processing in her various academic work. And before this, she was a research scientist in quantitative ecology. It's a very varied background and uh, bringing to us today a talk on AI accelerated human in the loop in the context of schools and land use and land cover mapping for climate actions. Really looking forward to your talk and I hand over to you from here. Thank you, Margarita. Um, can you can everyone hear me well? Yes, you can be heard very well. We can see your slides as well. Awesome. Uh, I will start then. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Nana E. Currently, um, machine learning at Development C. Uh, we are a small team um, working on a lot of like mission driven high impact uh, projects. And today, um, I am going to be touching on uh, two things. Uh, you know, like when you see uh, school and land cover mapping, like why are they all for uh, climate action? Why are they correlated? Um, so there's a storyline uh, behind it. Uh, simply is we are working with uh, two um, also like mission driven organization, specifically uh, UNICEF and uh, planetary, Microsoft Planetary Computer. Uh, we've been working with UNICEF, uh, particularly for school mapping um, since uh, 2017. And in fact, I was hired as a machine learning to come up with AI approach uh, to map school from high resolution satellite imagery. And when we were talking about high resolution uh, satellite imagery, we we're talking about 30 to 50 centimeter max world view imagery. Um, you know, like imagine school structure looks very differently. Uh, some school just, you know, naturally have a higher budget, a bigger campus. Some school sometimes just a shed, right? Like, so apart from that, uh, dif different culture may have their own unique architecture um, that can reflect on school building. Most school don't even have a, a clear school boundary. Uh, so you can imagine this kind of like a uh, problem is not really um, good for object detection as well as uh, semantic segmentation because uh, the boundary is just like not that clear compared to other objects we see in day-to-day -day lives. Um, but if you're looking through uh, enough school from 100 to 1,000 to 5,000, then you will start to have an, an opinion of like what makes school look 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 as school from the overhead high resolution um, satellite imagery? So that's the bright side. Um, th then we you know like we basically come up with a binary uh, image classification model. Um, I will go into detail later. Another um, the second uh, organization we we'll work with is Microsoft Planetary Computer. Uh, the mission is you know to um, to make data more accessible, um, make data analysis products more accessible um, for a sustainable future, which is, you know, a great for, um, um, a great for sort of like uh, climate and conservation science. Um, but if we're talking about like land cover mapping, and that is what we've been working with, um, with Microsoft team, that you know, like if you ask five researchers or scientists about how they define forest, um, they might come up with a different definition depends on the research geolocation, climate, um, tree cover, or whether a human in, uh, uh, disturbance or not, right? So um, land cover sometimes can be very challenging to work with. Um, so um, that's why, um, we bring in uh, school uh, land cover. We're not working directly toward uh, climate actions, but our partners are. 
um, this is uh, sort of like a one too many um, a problem, I would say. One is for school, right? Like we only want to have one AI accelerated workflow, which is, you know, binary uh, school classification model that work in one um, country. We want to want it to be transferable um, and, you know, like keep improving in another country. Um, despite they might look very different um, for the content wise. For land class, uh, land cover map, one AI accelerate works uh, platform. Uh, you know, we need to get user a freedom to define what the land class, land cover class um, by the own application. And this is very hard problem as well. Um, so this is the, the time like when human um, in the loop uh, come to the pictures. When you're looking at, you know, like AI transferable uh, from one geolocation to another geolocation and from one user to another user. Um, and, you know, like um, AI is not perfect, right? Like when you talk about it honestly, um, they we need a lot of like high quality training data set and it really re relies on uh, data, how much data you can provide. Um, but on the other side, human, um, human manual uh, annotation and data generation can be uh, very tedious, um, can be very time consuming. So this is the sweet spot where right? like human in the loop uh, come into the spot line that, you know, like ways uh, human high quality human input through the human in the loop, or sometimes we call it active learning, that um, model can uh, improve the, the performance through time. So that is the three uh, situation we want to be in. And in this case is, um, you know, scaling uh, AI to map every school on the planet, um, which is the AI case one uh, with UNICEF we've been working on. Um, just like give you a sense of like a picture of what we consider um, as a school, right? So from this uh, to basically a few screenshot, you can have a, a um, brief impression of like school can look very different uh, from the satellite imagery, right? Like this is like the chips, chips uh, or tile we use to, to run like a uh, classification model um, in our case. So schools sometimes have a, a clear sport field and they pave, sometimes they are just like bare earth. School like have a different shape of building, L, U, O, I, um, varies. Um, school in urban like look very kind of like expensive look. School in rural area might just like a random uh, bigger building size uh, compared to uh, surrounding uh, residential buildings. And you know the bare earth around it again right like that is the worst like playgrounds um, coming. Um, so you know like when we kind of like going through all the schools available in one given country, um, this is the school tile you can envision. Um, this is just give you an example for two countries. One is Indonesia and another one is um, Kazakhstan in Central Asia, right? So Nisha um, school are basically like, you know, like very orange or, um, or, or see uh, color themes because it's just like, you know, like sitting probably like in in the desert or less tree covered um, in a Sahara um, Africa. And can see Kastan um, on the other hand, you know, like um, the school like tend to have um, red, uh, blue, white uh, rooftop. Uh, they are bigger building uh, compared to Nija uh, country. And the the landscape again is like very strong, uh, very green to um, sort of like earthy look too. Um, so you can imagine now we have a school, uh, but not school actually is uh, way more diverse uh, diverse than school because you know like not school is just including other thing else. Um, uh, except school, right? Like that can be water body, desert, forest, uh, urban, um, 
urban or rural residential areas. Sometimes uh, other critical infrastructure looks very similar to school, which including a hospital, courthouse, marketplace, a factory, mall, those kind of like, right? So we do need to be careful of like what we actually introduce to uh, the binary image classification, which is school and not school. Um, so we want to match not school geodiversity as close to school as possible in that sense, like, you know, like, uh, we can exclude uh, the surrounding or landscape uh, confusion, but let model like uh, more focus on the structure, uh, school structure itself or school feature, that's what we call. Um, so, um, you know, like this is just like a stand standard process that um, when we have, when we receive the ge school geolocation, we actually need to have a human go to look at like every single geolocation to match with um, the satellite imagery uh, we want to go to train the model. Uh, through the process, human will only, human mapper or expert mapper will only keep the school like have very, um, you know, standout or outstanding school features, uh, as we already mentioned, like, you know, like playgrounds, school buildings, um, school uh, complex. And then from there, we create a tile, which is like image cheats and convert it to, um, you know, like uh, TF records in this uh, context that because we use a TensorFlow model. I won't go into much detail because I have another very um, 30 minutes like technical um, uh, presentation again tomorrow. Um, but in this case, um, in case you can't make it tomorrow, um, we train like country model, like specific to six country, right? Uh, in Kenya, um, Sierra Leone, uh, Kazakhstan, Rwanda, Niger, and Honduras. But we also wanna know like if any uh, adjacent com uh, country combined as a regional model actually is going to perform better than a single country model. In this case, we actually try out uh, Kenya, uh, plus uh, Rwanda to train an East Africa uh, regional model. And by by running model inference or prediction in Kenya with those two different models, we actually found out that, you know, like a uh, model, uh, regional model, e e East Africa regional model uh, specifically uh, actually performed better than Kenya as country model. It just like showcased that you know, when you allow model to learn uh, very diverse uh, um, or very diverse um, geophysically uh, feature, right? Like it's actually help model to um, to 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 separate um, schools from uh, not school, basically. Um, just to give you a a, a good sense of like um, how fast uh, this kind of like AI accelerate uh, process. Um, you just uh, we just don't know like if you ask um, a group of mapper go to map the whole country of the Kenya um, school map uh, how long it's gonna take but ways the AI um, running ahead of human and speed out uh, uh, predicted model then a human come in and validate the the, the, the output. A, a single mapper can actually validate or map the whole whole country of Kenya um, within like 30 hours. So that is how fast we can go. And here is, a, you know, what you see the, the before and after map, right? Like a green is the before um, sort of like, you know, like school map for this country and yellow dot are, um, machine learning model predict at school and then human come in and val validate it. That is actually a school. So we consider yellow is a mapped at school, um, which is currently doesn't um, even on the map yet. Um, but again, this needs to be verified um, on the ground. I believe this uh, work already been sent it to uh, UNICEF country, country office or uh, Ministry of Education to verify, like, you know, like now we already have a uh, machine learning output school and we already have like expert mapper uh, validated and are they actually school 
um, that is like up to the, the field data uh, confirmation, I would say. So we have uh, uh, Kenya and Rwanda as East Africa, and we have uh, Sierra Leone, Nisha as uh, West, West Africa. We have uh, Kinshasaistan, Uzbekistan uh, uh, in Central Asia, and now we have like Ghana in West Africa, um, Honduras. Ghana, you see that it's all like yellow because we just didn't have like um, school map in Ghana at all. Um, um, so if you want to see the comparison, there's this one like just a very small experiment. Um, you can imagine uh, now like Google published um, the whole continent of open building for Africa. Uh, we we can uh, we can assume that you know school is within all these buildings, right? So if you ask human to use uh, Google Open Building as a guide to looking for school um, in a small AOI test AOI in Nisha, we're looking at like around like six hundred school um, that human will spend like sixty oh, 51 hours to digging through this. Um, area and to find those 600 school, but with AI accelerated school classifier as a guide, um, you know, you can literally like narrow down the searching space a lot. But uh, at the same time, that's what we're saying, like AI is not perfect, which is, you know, you probably going to end up like hitting like 70% of school. That's a um, even we are confident, like a lot of like our math school, we filter out and present can can be like a real school on the ground. But you know, like at the same time, because the model just like was trained on very uh, distinctive or very standout features, so that could possibly be a drawback as well. Like we might miss a lot of um, uh, school. So. Uh, I'm not going to emphasize why like land cover map is very um, significant, you know, like an uh, accurate, uh, accessible land cover map are uh, essential for conservation, climate research and environmental planning. Um, and uh, we have a lot of like land cover map available to us already. One or two uh, really like stand out to me myself is one is European Space Agency CCI publish every one or two years publish like 10 meter resolution uh, land cover map like globally. And another one is just like recently come out is collaboration between E3 and um, Microsoft um, planetary computer. Again, uh, they were able to map a global land cover map uh, 10 meter resolution within a weeks, um, right? That, that is like really exciting. But what is different from like, you know, like why we have uh, another land cover mapping? So this is actually a platform is, uh, a, you know, like basically AI salary land cover uh, mapping platform on the browser. What you need to do is you just like uh, go searching Perl um, logging with your Google. And then uh, there's already a few, uh, uh, choose, choose a starter model already trained for you. There's a four class, nine class land, land use, currently only available in US. Uh, what you, after you select the model, you only need to hit run uh, model. So your any tile you select in your AOI, just send back to a cluster of GPU at the back end and run the model prediction with the starter model and it will speed out the result. So um, it can be as fast as this uh, real-time prediction. So you will have a land cover mapping. It's not only like this, um, you can actually, uh, you know, like if you are not happy with these classes, you can add new classes to your land cover mapping. You can, if you care more about like, you know, like just build up uh, classes uh, because you're doing urban planning, you can go, after you run the inference, you can uh, go to uh, basically like draw a new training data set and you can run the inference after um, retraining and run the inference and get the land cover map. And uh, until, you know, you can go 
as many uh, retraining sessions as possible until you satisfy with the result. You can export it uh, as GeoTIFF or you can like keep it in the browser and next time you log in, uh, the model and the result still going to be there for you. So um, that is sort of like a customized um, give user a freedom to basically play with the model already being trained for you. So, you know, like you can, um, you can, you can, you can uh, reuse it over and over again. Um, this is just like showcase uh, how model uh, can improve uh, performance through time. If you care about like certain classes, um, you know, like by just like create a training data set uh, by yourself, uh, keep uh, refining or retraining it the model, um, you will see the improvement through time. So that is uh, basically uh, my point of, you know, like one too many. One is we want this model uh, transportable, um, actively learned through times and geolocation, um, or we want to give user freedom uh, to customize the classes they care about, one too many um, issue. And then um, this kind of like, you know, like AI salary uh, approach uh, can improve through time uh, with human in the loop uh, process. So all of these are pretty critical for climate action, I would say, uh, more active, uh, more technical walkthrough uh, for those two use cases. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to talk about school mapping with um, UNICEF. And on Friday, my colleague Martha and Caleb are going to talk about the land cover mapping with Microsoft. Um, yeah, so we're hiring. Uh, come to work with us if you care as much as you know making impact uh, in the space. Uh, uh, keep keep uh, yeah connect with us uh, through Twitter or um, GitHub or LinkedIn. That's it. Uh, welcome. Any question if you have? Fantastic. Thank you so much. And that's great to hear that you've got two, uh, two talks coming up to, to take a deeper dive so that people can continue to find out more. Uh, we do have a few questions for you from the audience. We've got um, two questions about schools to start with. The first is um, about what the best da global data set for school locations is that you are aware of and the person thinking particularly of use in disaster response and earthquake context. Oh, yeah, this is such a good question. Um, yeah, so I, unfortunately, um, if you are want to start to work with school data, uh, the, the, the best source to go to go for now is OpenStreetMaps. Uh, you can query like school data from there. Uh, we work with UNICEF. Um, I believe they are working with, um, you know, um, Ministry of Education at the country level trying to open source the data sets, but currently um, are not available. So OpenStreetMap are the best place to start with um, global wise. Excellent, thank you. And the other question about schools is actually on the side of the AI and how does the AI handle it when schools, for example, in regions where there's um, seasonal snow handle these kinds of seasonality issues? Oh, that's another good question. So, um, you know, like for school, right? Like if we are thinking about, this is kind of like building, you know, like similar to highway, it's not like moving through time. So if you think that we don't really need to have like any temporal information to train the model, which is you can actually use a base map, right? Like similar to what you see from uh, Google, Google, Google map. Um, a lot of like commercial company like Maxar, uh, Planet, uh, Planet, like they provide like base map. So you can use like three meter or one meter or like high resolution um, as a training data set, as long as you can recognize school feature, um, you know, school complex uh, from the uh, satellite. So you just use the base layer basically. Interesting. Um, and we also have two offers of help along with questions. The first is uh, uh, the first is from Ghana asking about um, where they could find a repository of validated data to have access to the data, as he would like to offer to um, help with um, mapping the data from Ghana. Oh, that's uh, that's awesome! I will 
If you don't mind, uh, send me an email or connect me uh, on Twitter or you know like other platform. I would love to like connect you with UNICEF. Uh, they are actually building a platform, um, basically having like yes and no a platform. So feeding user a random um, image chips and whether the school. So you know like by crossing sourcing this, um, you can also like see a lot of map. Another efforts like they're doing also is like just like gathering uh, cloud sourcing efforts to map a certain er area uh, through map campaign. Yeah. And another member of the audience is mentioning the um, the ML training data set and that it would be nice to contribute with your school ML training data set and the Radiant ML Hub. And they're hosting open ML training data sets. Oh, that's excellent. Yes. Um, need to. Uh, Kind of like have a, a broader discussion with UNICEF. Um, I think that is like sort of like under the radar. But I'm 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 not promising because you know it's up to UNICEF because they do have like a lot of like regulation through uh, different countries. So yeah, excellent. And I have a final question of my own, if I may, and that's whether you you have any kind of integrations with OpenStreetMap that allows that allows people to make their own ground truthing contributions or data or or data pointing contributions to the underlying data set. Um, that's that's a good one too. I believe uh, that's what UNICEF are trying to do, um, basically. Like, but probably like not contribute to OpenStreetMap because OpenStreet. Uh, also have their own lessons, right? Like you can't uh, map, uh, basically you can't dump the data directly to OpenStreetMap yet. Um, that sense, you know, like UNICEF do have their own system that um, they have human to validate or crowdsourcing the training data set and uh, look back to train the model and then uh, have a human uh, validation through the system. And as long as they you get, you know, a pass from the the, the country to share the data, I believe that is eventually uh, going to end up like in the uh, open source uh, database. But um, yeah, to be honest, like it's 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 very unclear to me uh, so far. <laughs> well, lots of offers of collaboration, so that's uh, that's fantastic. And of course, what yeah. you're doing at the heart of it is something close to many people's hearts. Thank you yeah. very much, Chef. Uh, I'm going to um, invite our next speaker to the stage, Flavia, but we have three minutes before the session actually starts. So I'll, I'll take a moment to see if we have, um, that we haven't had Joseph rejoin us. I think he'd say he's following from the background. See if there's any other questions that come up. Um, the organizers have asked that I start sharp at the top of the hour. So anybody that's joining us exactly for Flavia's session does not miss a word. Flavia, would you like to get your, I see that you've got your um, slides not up yet. Would you like to get your slides ready for us? We'll add those to the screen. Thank you very much again, Nana. Thank you.